the head coach, Dave Rose. Coach, nice to have you back in Studio B. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Looking fresh in a tie. Did yeah, you dress up for us? It's a big day. No, not for you. This oh, okay. Is, uh, <laughs> okay. This is for some other assignments later on in the day, but... Uh, I actually feel good. I'm. I, I look better than both of you. <laughs> it's true. Yes. You normally do. Yes. Um, you, you can feel your face this time. That's, yes, that's good. That is good. I, I was. Uh, ben reminded me that when I was walking in the last time I was here, the whole right side of my face was numb. <laughs> Shout out to your dentist. But I was a gamer. <laughs> I came in and made sure we got that done. But I feel a lot better today. You played through the pain. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he does. Dave Rose, the head coach at BYU, with us on BYU Sports Nation. Practices begin Monday. What kind of preparation and development can you really know about? Because you know your team's running, but it's it's not official. So what what have you been able to see and really notice when it hasn't been official? Well, we, we've had you know two hours a week with the guys over the course of the eight week summer semester and now since fall semester has begun. So, um, you know, we have a pretty good idea uh, of the skill level, kind of the, uh, you know, how much how in shape they are, their endurance, all those kind of things. But uh, how they actually interact with each other and will actually learn our system. You know, the real challenge for us this summer, uh, I felt, was to really kind of build our body and to get stronger as a team and as a group and, uh, with our, our new strength uh, coach, Eric Shork, I think we've done a great job. I mean, you, you just look at all the numbers, and the numbers are, are, are stand out. But you, all you have to do is look at the bodies of our guys, and you'll see that uh, they put a lot of work in. And, and I think that's a good sign to start. Uh, the thing that's a little bit different, well, a lot different than last year, is we were way further along at this point. We had just returned from Spain, uh, had some older guys in our program, uh, and now we've got on our roster of 15 guys, nine of them are were not on our eligible roster last year. <laughs> and wow. our starting center is not inside, he's outside playing football. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do in the next uh, five or six weeks. And I think that's probably the most exciting part about this, about the start. Um, you know, the NCAA changed their rules a few years ago, and you go to the first game – scheduled game and then go back 42 days and you have 30 days to practice in that period and uh so that that, that when you take uh, our princeton game i think is on the 14th so that puts monday as the official day that we can start mm -hmm. and so from monday until that princeton game uh we have 30 scheduled practices with 12 days off and uh, uh i think that'll work really well for us but we've got a lot of work to do and got to get started can you look at a team before the season and have a good sense of what you're capable of or how good you are? I think uh, most seasons, you, I think we can really get a feel for it. This year, it's, uh, it, it's a little bit different. We have one guard, Nick Emery, has played major minutes at BYU. That's the first time ever in my 11-year you know, head coaching career and the other eight years. So we're talking about 20 years. I mean, not to have multiple returning guys mm -hmm. and uh, – and so, so Nick will carry a lot of load. I, I think we've got a lot of experience back there with, with LJ, who's played at both pro two different programs, and with Elijah, who uh, has played Division I basketball, a lot of minutes and really successful at it. But uh, a lot of new guys have to come in and turn into what we saw from Zach Selyus last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, Zach really kind of turned it on um, starting in the middle of December sometime. And uh, hopefully we'll get these other guys to – Maybe ramp that up and, and get ready right at the 1st of November. How long does it take a team to gel, especially when there are so many moving parts, whether it be incoming true freshmen, return missionaries, or the transfer like L.J. Rose? How, how long do you give them to gel? Every year is different. Every group is different. You know, I, I think um, the one thing that I can really tell uh, from the very beginning is how coachable the team is going to be because it, you learn all that through – your summer semester and through your individual work up to this point, this seems to be a really uh, coachable group. They 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 seem to really uh, absorb everything that comes in. You you know uh, as you watch the film from these individual, um, I'm gone a lot because I travel, of recruiting and and doing a lot of other things, uh, but I get to see you know these guys develop and uh, and and progress from day to day and week to week. And I, I really believe it's a coachable group. 
Uh, we're going to need to be a really coachable group. I also believe that it's going to be a deep group. Uh, I think at this time of the year, you always think your team's going to be deep. But uh, I, I just believe that uh, the talent level of this group is uh, maybe as good as we've had for a while. And, and I think that will really help us in our depth. And with that comes expectations. And this particular group, um, with these guys from Lone Peak and Yoli Childs and a lot of these, there's been a lot of excitement for a long time ever since <laughs> Nick and TJ walked into your office and committed together. So what are the expectations for this group in year one of what you hope is a two- or three-year run here? Well, you know, our expectations are off, off the charts. I, I think that uh, we always uh, feel that, uh, you know, we should be able to win a con conference championship and – uh, and that hasn't happened here for quite a few years. Uh, I think last year we left a couple games on the table that cost us a conference championship, and that doesn't sit really well with some of these returning guys, and hopefully that we can get that edge into our group, which is, uh, you know, which is something that's really important with the team. Uh, but I will tell you this. I mean, I've been around a long time here, and uh, I love it when people get excited about basketball but this is a little bit unprecedented. Uh, I, I get stopped everywhere I go in town from people I've never seen before that tell me <laughs> you know, how excited they are about this basketball season, which is, uh, I think, really exciting for our players. Um, when you think about that time, TJ and Nick stepped into my office. That was about five years, five and a half years ago. And, uh, in fact, we were recruiting some other players at that time who have actually had a career and graduated. <laughs> <laughs> that is the honest truth. No, I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's BYU, man. So we have waited a long time for this group to kind of come together and uh, looking forward to getting started on Monday. Wow. Okay, so with those expectations and you're being stopped in the excitement, it, it seems more like you're, you're embracing this and, and you welcome it. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole... I think the beauty of our game at this time in, in 2016 is to get people excited and to get them on your side. I think, you know, I mean, I've been coaching for 30 years, and at one time, you know, a guy would get up here and say, oh, hey, you know, maybe we'll win a few games and hopefully everything works out. <laughs> <All right. laughs> You're not going to trick anybody nowadays. Everybody knows everything about everybody. And the bottom line is, is that this is a really talented group of guys. I don't know how good our team's going to be. I've got a lot of – uh, ideas of what we can do and how we can do it. I'm excited about the fact that they are so young as a group that they can build together. I am really nervous that they are so young <laughs> <laughs> and inexperienced, you know, uh, but, but they will grow together. But that's the exciting part about this time of year. I mean, I, I, I really believe that um, the best part of being a coach is the fact that you get a new team every year and the excitement of putting together a new team and then trying to make it work and see what you can do with it is what makes it special for me. We've buried the lead. Um, now that Eric Mika's back, but Luke Worthington is still in Chile, who's going to be the <laughs> scapegoat for Eric's first two fouls? <laughs> well, that will be that will be interesting, but I am <laughs> I am prepared for that. I mean, we, we, we have Brayden Shaw and we have Peyton Dastrup, and, and Corbin will get there eventually, and uh, – and Eric and uh, Kyle Davis and Yoli. I mean, I, I think when you talk about our front line, which has been issues for us over the last you know few years, it's been really thin, and we've been kind of a perimeter-oriented group. I think this group could really be, uh, uh, you know, where, where we're playing uh, with some real physical big bodies on the floor all the time, which I think will really help us. The schedule is really interesting, uh, dealing with how the West Coast Conference schedule worked out, and we'll get there in a minute, but let's start with the non-conference games. It's been a challenge, and it's a huge effort by Tim Lacombe and uh, your guys to put together a quality non-conference schedule. When you look at the games this year, what do you think about the non-conference schedule? Well, the, the, there's one game that in particular that really is on my mind, and that's the Princeton game, okay, because that's – the first one we play we've got a couple exhibition games which will be interesting to to see how our guys kind of like you talked about gel early and see what who comes together but uh the non-conference schedule i think is highlighted by uh the staple center game and the united center game as far as our players are concerned they'll be so excited to go play in these nba arenas obviously extremely disappointed that we don't have utah in our gym this year which we had planned on uh, but uh, that series will will start again next the following season um, but it's it, it is difficult, and uh, 
excited about this year this year's uh, preseason schedule. But we are going to have to be really successful in that uh, that schedule in order to get us in a position to uh, um, you know to, to be tournament worthy late in the year. And when conference starts, at least you're not playing at St. Mary's in late December. <laughs> Coming straight from, you know, Hawaii. You know, I mean, that, that was – they dealt that to, to us really well. Uh, that was but, fun. But, uh, you know, the conference schedule is unique. Uh, this is the same kind of schedule we played in the Mountain West Conference, except for the fact that we were Wednesday, Saturday. And now we're Thursday, Saturday, and we're flying back and forth in the same week be on the West Coast, you know, uh, on a Thursday and be back in the Marriott Center on a Saturday or vice versa. Uh, there aren't travel partners per, per se. I think one trip is a, is a, at Portland Gonzaga, which is, a, a, is normal. But other than that, uh, I think the Pepperdine trip, which is usually uh, LMU, we go Pepperdine to San Francisco, which is, is different. So the opening weekend, Santa Clara here at home, and then we're out on the road that next Saturday, so uh, that same Saturday. So it, it, it is different. Uh, and we will have to adjust to that. Logistics of that travel will be uh, interesting for us. We're obviously one of the, the edge geographic schools, and so we'll have to figure that out and make it work for us. Coach, great to talk to you. I know you're anticipating getting into the Marriott Center Annex, the YMCA. Hey, you know what? There's a chance we'll be in there next week in the gym. Really? Which, uh, oh, wow. you know, the spectacular, homecoming spectacular kicks us out of there every year, uh, and... Uh, so we'll practice in the Marriott Center on Monday, and then the plan right now, instead of going to the RB, that the gym portion of that will be uh, yeah. an option for us. Let us know what time, Coach. So we're looking forward to that. Hopefully that happens. Hopefully it works out. Coach, great to talk to you. All right, thanks, guys.